Hello everyone, in this week's After Effects scripting quick tip tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a keyframe shift script. Now what this script will simply allow you to do is take something that's been animated with keyframes and instead of say you had to, say we had to move this entire thing up like 500 pixels, instead of moving your keyframe up and then having to go, oh the next one I need to move up 500 too, so subtract 500, go to the next keyframe, subtract 500 and going through to each keyframe and having to adjust things this time we'll have a script that tells it shift everything by this much so I can shift everything up 500 by just running the script and those will instantly be adjusted and say I wanted to adjust it down 500 I could just add 500 and I could even adjust it on the other axes shift it left 150 and it will continue to do that as much as I would like so this is going to be a nice simple keyframe shifter that allows us to put in the values we want and adjust things quickly. So to get started, I'm going to open a new JavaScript really quick, and we're going to get started by making a variable for our project, which is equal to app.project. And then we're also going to have a variable for our composition called comp, which is going to be assumed to be our active item. We're going to assume we have a layer and a composition selected over here. So then we'll have our layer, of our layer equals our comp dot selected layers. And we're assuming again one selected layer. So the first index, which is zero. So this should give us our white solid here. And now let's go ahead and grab our property for whatever's being keyframed, in this case, position. I want to basically go through the amount of keyframes. So we're going to use a for loop with our position. We'll start with var i equals 1, because we start at keyframe number 1. And we're going to go up until we're at our layer dot property position and the num keys, or the number of keyframes, which in this case is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, of course, we'll increment i by 1. So this is going to go from keyframe 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. And then whatever we do inside of here is what's going to happen to those keyframes. So what we want to do is apply our shift, obviously. Before we do this, I'm going to create a couple of variables. The first one called our new keys. These are going to be like our new keyframes. And we're also going to have one called this key, which will represent the current keyframe we're looking at. And then we're also going to have this time and one called calculated key. This time is going to uh, basically tell it what time the keyframe is at, because uh, that's an important thing to know. And then as well, our calculated key is going to have our new value. So now inside of our for loop, we're going to start off by defining this key, which should be this key, not this keys. And this key is going to be equal to a layer, the property position. And we need to grab the key and the key value at the index i. So this is going to look at the very first key and it's going to grab the value for us. So now we've set up the keyframe itself. We, for this time, we're going to do the exact same thing as above, but instead of key value, we're going to get the key time at this index. So this is going to give us the value and this is going to give us the time. And now we're going to grab our calculated key variable and set this equal to well, in this case, our position is an X and a Y, so we need two things, and we'll put them inside of these brackets. I'll grab this key 0, which is going to be equivalent to X, and this key 1. What this says is our calculated key, just an empty variable right now, is going to be set equal to whatever the value is on our first key. So 392 is going to be this key, the X1. And then 692 is going to be this key plus 1. So we're really just getting them uh, basically reading the value of what the keyframe is. But to calculate it, we need to add whatever we want to it. So let's say we want to uh, add 250 pixels to the Y. We wanted to take the 692 and add 250, but do that to every single one. So we can do that. So now we have what the value is going to be after it's been set, but now we need to set it. So I'm going to grab my layer and I'm going to say set value at time. And of course we want to apply this to the position property that is keyframed. 
And for the set value at time, the first thing we need to give it is the time at which it, we're going to set it. And in this case, it's going to be this time. So we're at this keyframe, and we're looking to set the value at this keyframe as well. And then, of course, we need to give it the value to set it to. For this, we're just going to feed it our calculated key that we just set up. So essentially what this whole loop is doing is it's going through the number of keyframes in our entire property here. Each time through, we're going to grab the value and grab the time. That way we can manipulate the, basically the value. Then we are going to manipulate the value. We're going to, in this case, add 250 to the, uh, the Y, and we can even do it to the X as well. And then we're going to grab our position again, use the current time we're at, and overwrite the keyframe each time through. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see it's shifting it 250 down and 250 to the right. And if I just wanted to say shift it back up to the center-ish, we could subtract 500 pixels and shift the entire thing. And just to add a last touch to this, you should probably add a begin and end undo group. Um, that way you can easily just undo all this if it's something you didn't want to do. So then we can do this and then easily click on undo. Otherwise we have to go through and undo each individual and that's gonna take forever. So hopefully that's a useful script that you guys can use and some useful concepts in there for manipulating and adjusting keyframes. That is how you can create a simple keyframe shifter and this will apply for any property and it'd be interesting to see if you could expand that into working for all properties. So thank you guys for watching this and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below, hit thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this week's video and we'll see you next time.